This is the Rainbow Aviation video channel, and I'm your host, Brian Carpenter. Welcome back to this video series on 3D printed vortex generators. In part two of this video series, we undertook a series of different placements of the vortex generator version one, and then compared the airflow patterns and the aircraft performance in relationship to the baseline airflow data that we had established in video part one. In part three, we're going to take a step backwards and show the methods and procedures used for placement and installation of the 3D printed vortex generators. So we've been using the Zortrax M200 3D printer to create our vortex generators. We typically will print a group of between 8 to 16 vortex generators at the same time. And all of the vortex generators that we're using for this video series are 3D printed using ABS plastic. And it typically takes approximately 15 minutes per vortex generator to complete the print. Once we've removed the vortex generators from the 3D printer, they are still attached to the raft and the base material. The design includes a chamfer at the trailing edge that expands the width of the vortex generator to provide a more substantial attachment to the build platform. In addition, the 30 degree chamfer on the trailing edge of the vortex generators allows for a clean separation point when we go to remove the vortex generator from the raft material. To remove the vortex generator from the base material, we simply apply a small amount of pressure in the direction shown, then flip the print in the opposite direction, and duplicating the process, pop each one of the vortex generators off the raft and base material. If, after removal, you find that the separation point between the vortex generator and the raft material has left a rough surface, we can simply take an X-Acto knife and trim and clean up the trailing edge. Once we've cleaned up each one of the vortex generators, we're now ready to start the installation process. In this series of videos, we've been experimenting with the use of commercial grade double-sided mounting tape. The process is really quite simple. We simply roll out a section of the double-sided tape and place the vortex generator base onto the sticky side of the tape. We then take an X-Acto knife and trim the double-sided tape to the vortex generator profile. Ensure that in the process of working with the 3D printed vortex generators and the tape that you do not allow your fingers to come in contact with either surface as the oils that are on your hands can degrade the adhesive properties. We've purchased a wide selection of different tapes to experiment with including Gorilla, Scotch, and 3M brands. These brands have several different selections of tape, but it appears that they're made by the same manufacturer with simply different labeling. The clear tapes are equally good as the foam tapes, however the gooey nature of this clear tape presents a bit of a challenge when trimming with an X-Acto knife. The foam back tapes in both the 15 and 30 pound rating appear to work equally well on our low speed GT500 test bed, but obviously the 30 pound tape has a stronger adhesive. Okay, so throughout all of our testing that we've completed so far, we've found that we like working with the 30 pound rated foam tape the best. Most of the different brands have their version of this same type of 30 pound rated double sticky tape. It's easy to work with and it really sticks. So the next process is to install the Vortex generators onto the wing. The process of installing the Vortex generator is, well, obviously quite simple, however, the exact placement is another story entirely. We'll get back to that in a minute. For the installation process, we simply remove the backing from the other side of the double sticky tape and then carefully apply the vortex generator into the proper position on the wing. Keep in mind that we should have a clean surface in the area that we're working with on the wing and we should keep our fingers off of that area as well as off of the sticky side of the double sided tape before we do the installation. Now to the subject of placement. Part of the purpose of this series of videos is to explore some of the results that are achieved through not only the installation placement location, but vortex generator design and vortex generator orientation. In part two of this video series, we saw the results of placing the version one vortex generators in different locations and how it affected the airflow over the wing. In order to ensure consistent placement and orientation, we generated a template that helps position each vortex generator at its optimal angle of attack. 
Then using the template as a guide, we were able to place each of the vortex generators in a very consistent pattern over the wing. So as we continue to experiment with the different configurations on the aircraft, we'll also continue to publish each one of the test results and make available on the website the templates as well as the STL files and even the Zortrax M200-3D printing files. And we'll put a link in the description below so that you can go directly to the database where these files are contained for downloading. We want to thank you again for watching these videos. This has been the third episode of the 3D printed Vortex Generator video series. And we look forward to bringing you several more in the future. If you appreciate these videos, remember to share, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And until we see you again, I've been your host, Brian Carpenter, wishing you happy flying.